standards on the field. And I never thought that would be even a, an idea in Graham as soon as he said all Liverpool's. Last question, then we won't talk about it anymore, but Kenny Dalglish, you know him well. You've spoken well, a lot recently. Surprise I don't, you? Yeah. yeah, very much so. I mean, I was up there when Jimmy Carter signed on from Millwall. And I, I was with him the whole day in training and with Kenny the whole day. And he picked us up at the, um, the station and he was so relaxed. He and Tom Saunders had a terrific uh, little joke going on and they did the Times crossword in the morning and they did it driving up towards training. And I just thought to myself at the time, there's Kenny with one of the best clubs in the world and yet he's handling it so well. He looks one of the lads and he's out there joining in in training. And uh, he comes off and he, he can just switch over from being the manager to the player. And he looked so relaxed, didn't look as though there was a problem in the world. And when this came out, it, it absolutely astonished me. And if, I mean, if his own staff didn't know, then we're all really guessing, aren't we? Mm. Because mm. Kenny doesn't let out a great deal, and evidently he never even told anyone until the day actually happened. Well, here's Glenn Hussein, the Liverpool skipper, on the long walk, and it is quite a walk, let me tell you, from the dressing room area down the tunnel at Goodison Park. A turn left as we look at it for Hussein. Grubble R, who missed out at Luton on Saturday as a result of a stomach illness. Peter Beardsley, who got two last week. Ian Rush, who was on the score sheet as well. And Jan Mulby, well, he ran the show seven days ago. Mixed reception for Hussein, I'm sure. <laughs> Makes you think, Frank, doesn't it? You've done that. Oh, aye, many times. It got a little bit serious, I thought, the players there. I think it must have stunned the players quite a lot, actually. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what effect it's got tonight, because on Saturday they've never been particularly happy on the looting pitch. And I think it'll be very interesting, uh, interesting to see how they come back tonight. And, because their last performance before Kenny actually resigned was tremendous. I know they let some bad goals in at the back, but their passing was back to almost their very best. And they scored Bearsley's goal and Barnes' goal was absolutely magnificent. Wasn't it just? I was in Scotland yesterday. Big audience in Scotland tonight. I know we have. Good evening to you all. It's nice to have you along. And welcome if you're watching on Sky Movies. This match live from Goodison Park tonight. Everton against Liverpool. And that's what I like about a Merseyside derby. Blue and red all around the ground, mixing happily together. That's what it should be about. I it? think that's about the only city that I know in the world that uh, supporters can travel in the same bus. Yeah and be an Everton fan and a Liverpool fan and be perfectly fine afterwards, it's fantastic. Plenty of smiles from Kevin Ratcliffe and his Everton side, who must, as we've said a little earlier now, make themselves favourites, surely. A little left, we've just seen Hussein take, down a couple of steps and up into the arena. And what a burst of noise we can expect when the Evertonians get their first sight of Kevin Ratcliffe. We'll just wait for that. Hmm. Well, tonight's game brings our coverage of live FA Cup matches to this season for 16. There's been highlights too from all the other big games. We know that we've got huge audiences in pubs and clubs up and down the country, but if you want this service in your own home, ring Sky now on 07 33 89 double one double one. 07 33 89 double one. Double one. Let's go to Goodison Park. Our commentators, the top team, Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Thank you, Richard. Good evening, everybody. A match in a million a week ago. The Kenny Dalglish subsequent decision even more stunning in its own way. So the sense of expectation here, I can tell you, is exceptional. Everton have announced this team. Neville Southall, but for whom Liverpool could have doubled their tally in that amazing first replay. Neil McDonald wears number two, but he's likely to play in midfield. Andy Hinchcliffe, the left-back, sold to Everton by Howard Kendall when he was manager of Manchester City. Kevin Ratcliffe, Everton's captain and their longest-serving player. Dave Watson, a Liverpudlian whose family have split loyalties tonight. Martin Keown, who, along with Ratcliffe and Watson, has been operating in the centre of defence. Ray Atterveld started last week's game at right-back and may well do the same tonight. Stuart McCall, who certainly lifted the tempo for Everton when he came on as a substitute. Graham Sharp is playing with such authority in this tie. And here's the surprise, perhaps. Mike Newell preferred to Tony Cotty. Cotty again on the bench. John Ebrill, whose progress is such a credit to the FA National School, of which he was one of the first graduates. 
Well, Ronnie Moran's options reduced by the injuries to Steve McMahon and Ronnie Whelan, Gary Gillespie and Alan Hansen, of course, and Jimmy Carter, who was hurt in uh, training. David Burrows is also unavailable through suspension. So this is the Liverpool side, and Bruce Grebelar is back in goal after the illness which forced his late withdrawal at Luton last Saturday. Glenn Hussein is again the acting captain. Barry Venison has worn eight different numbers for Liverpool this season. It's the number three tonight. Steve Nicholl, one of nine full internationals in the side, despite Liverpool's problems. Jan Mulby, who's passing from midfield, could be such a threat to Everton. Gary Ablett has graduated up into the England B setup now. Peter Beersley, whose return in the first replay was so spectacular with those two great goals. Ray Houghton, who returned to the side at Luton after missing eight matches. Ian Rush, whose goal here last Wednesday took his season's tally to 20. John Barnes has scored in his last three games here at Goodison Park. And finally, it's Steve Staunton for Republic of Ireland International. David Speedy and Nick Tanner are the substitutes for Liverpool. Joe Worrell is no stranger to Merseyside derbies, although he hasn't uh, taken part in this particular cup saga as yet. He was in charge of the 1989 FA Cup final between these two sides. Three years ago, Liverpool were here in a fifth round tie and it was settled by Ray Houghton. For those who were here last Wednesday night, all bursting to be back with, of course, one notable exception. And if Kenny Dalglish is watching our coverage tonight, Kenny, we wish you every success in whatever path you choose in your future. Liverpool straight away on the attack. Steve Staunton's come across to take the corner. Barnes waiting by the near post. It's a deep one. It's over Hussein. Here's Mulby. Mike Newell doing the blocking. I haven't even had a chance to say good evening to Andy Gray yet. We will... Uh, wait until uh, the appropriate moment Ablett Benison Newell the pitch as you can see showing signs of heavy rain that's fallen in the hour leading up to kickoff McDonald aiming for Sharp Good evening, Andy. Yes, it's wonderful to be back again, isn't it? After last Wednesday's wonderful match. And I think we've seen already the tactics involved. Liverpool, the one going in attack there, passing the ball about. Everton in return with McDonald playing a long ball, looking for Graham Sharp. And I think that's probably why Mike Newell has got the nod over Tony Cotty. Howard Kendall knows that the Everton front two worried Liverpool at the back last week. And so he's decided to leave Tony Cotty on the substitutes bench. Cotty, as you would understand, very, very disappointed with the decision. But in a way, Mike Newell helped soften up uh, Liverpool and Cotty cashed in when he came on. I think it's an understandable decision because those two players there, both Pat Nevin and Tony Cotty, if the aerial bombardment isn't working for Everton, then Howard Kendall has the option of changing it. At the moment, the problem for Everton is to get the ball. Here's Rush. It's a difficult angle, but he's turned well, and the duel quickly resumed between two great friends, two Welsh internationals, and two focal figures in this match. Rush does ever so well. He knows that Martin Keown's committed to the tackle. It's a difficult chance, but that's a good save again from Neville Southall. It started just the way we wanted it to. Well, remember, Liverpool have been badly hit in the centre of midfield with Whelan and McMahon injured and Burrows, who did a job in that area a week ago here, he's suspended. So Ray Houghton, who often plays on the right-hand side, 
is in the centre alongside Jan Mulvey. Andy, what do you make of that? Well, I, I honestly don't think there's any surprise in that. Steve Nichol is far happier playing wide, either right back or right side midfield. And so I don't feel there's a surprise in that. Ray Houghton, I think they will miss somebody like David Burrows, who did an, a, a, ever such a good job last Wednesday, and having a bit of bite about him. And that may be the one thing that they lack in there, if Everton start to pass the ball about. But the quality of Ray Houghton, unquestioned. Header from Staunton. McCall in the fiercely for Everton. Houghton uncertain there, but recovering, although Grobelaar's got to sprint to prevent the corner and he can't do it. And there was a little victory in the centre of the field for McCall and company then. Kevin Cheedy's still uh, injured, although he's only a week away from uh, recovery, he was telling me before the game. Atterveld, it's a block by Rush, McDonald whips it in, and uh, Ablett didn't connect cleanly with the header. That's going to be another corner. And that's where Everton feel they can win the tie, with the ball in the air, as it is now for Sharp. It may look crude at times, Martin, but when you're in a cup tie and a Merseyside derby and the prize is so great, and you know that a tactic worries a team, then our Kendall will not be ashamed to use that tactic. Could do it, may look. Mulvey, it's a different approach from Liverpool, who uh, love to get the ball down and settle to their passing game. Everton trying to be forthright and direct and expend their energy. Here's McDonald, Sharp coming for the ball to feet. Tucked back to Grobelaar by Nickel. Glenn Hussein, it's not been easy for Liverpool defensively. Seven goals conceded in their last two games. And they're in trouble here. Sharp got there before Hussein. Well, it's not the most convincing defending, is it, again? And Graham Sharp does worry them. It's a difficult opportunity, it's a snapshot. Bruce Grobler will be happy to get a touch of the ball. Here's Rush. Marked by Watson and McDonald with an ambitious back pass, but the whistle had already gone. For a free kick to Liverpool. You did well to hear that whistle in this noise, Martin. Hussein has been sent forward. Barnes and Rush making their moves. It goes for Hussein. Came off Keown. It's a corner to Liverpool. Seven minutes gone. It's the second replay, remember, of the FA Cup fifth round. And the Bruce Grobelaar has gone all the way as the corner's been taken here. Barnes flicks it on. Grobelaar has gone all the way to the bench. He's now on his way back to his goal in the other half. Looked as though he'd come out without his tie-ups and needed to uh, get something to uh, hold his socks up. Barnes are trying to make a run through the centre. Mulvey's seen him and found him, but it's just too awkward for Barnes to control. I think when Liverpool arrived here tonight and they saw that the rain was falling, Martin, they would have a little smile on their face because the way they enjoy passing the ball about, then the slick surface undoubtedly will help that. Maybe uh, one or two uh, premature thoughts about a decline in Liverpool status after the defeat at Luton on Saturday. I should point out they had worse results on the plastic when Kenny Dalglish was manager. 
on a couple of occasions. So we might see uh, the essence of the post-Dalglish era more obvious in this match. It's a ground unlike Luton, where Liverpool are used to uh, succeeding. Good tackle by McCall, though. It is frantic. And there are bound to be uh, casualties along the way. And this for Everton is McCall. I think already we've seen what a bright opening Liverpool have had, Mark. If there are any signs of pressure or any discontent in the camp, it's not showing through. They are sticking the ball about ever so well early on in the game. using the conditions to help the tackle. Rush jumping. Staunton uh, trying to give McDonald a problem here. But there's a way out for Neil McDonald. It involves uh, the Dutchman, Raymond Atterveld. Sharp. Hinchcliffe pushing on down the left. And there are four, wearing Everton blue in the middle. Hamlet heads it out. Sharp. This is Atabel. Trouble can't hold it. Atabel goes in again. What a good move from Everton, showing that they are capable of passing the ball again. And as it comes to Atabel, it's a good strike. Bruce Scrubble had trouble because it just bounces in front of him but recovers and gets hold of it. Good start, good positive start from both teams. Not a negative thought in their minds at this moment, Mark. It's good to see. I think it's fair to say that if this game is one-tenth as good as last week, we'll all be satisfied. I think the one thing that we will get, we may not get the goals, we may not get eight goals, Martin, but every other ingredient that we got last week will be here tonight. That we can be sure of. And there is, of course, an extra ingredient, the fact but Kenny Dalglish has gone. <laughs> Beardsley and Rush both offering themselves to receive the throw. Atterveld aiming for Sharp. Everton first to a loose ball in midfield. And they get the free kick. Everton, uh, of course, showed some reaction at the weekend by losing here to Sheffield United. That may well have been a case of after the Lord Mayor's show. Put it on first by Sharp, then by Watson in behind Nicole Keogh. A wonderful save from Bruce Scrubbola. And who is it that comes in? It's Dave Watson again. And rifles into the net. For the first time in this tie, Everton are in front, despite the agility of Grubbola. Mulvey couldn't deal with the ball as it came off the goalkeeper. And it was the other number five, Dave Watson, a former Liverpool reserve, who thumped Everton into the lead. And that's what Howard Kendall wanted. He had Gusselli saved the down four times last week. And he was asking this morning, it'll be strange to see my team go up and see how we cope with it. Now we can sit and watch. The goal coming after 12 minutes. <laughs> Keown heads it away. Liverpool really on their metal now. Nickel. Crosses, Barnes tries to meet it. Staunton, McCall in first for Everton. Off goes Sharp, it's over Ablett. 
And uh, Ablett, in a worthy way, really, kept his nerve there when Liverpool needed him. There was a situation there that could have caused confusion between defender and goalkeeper. Just thinking back to the goal, Martin, I wonder if the ball had dropped to anyone other than Jan Molby. We all know Jan likes to bring the ball down and try and play himself out of trouble. But I do think on that occasion he would have been much wiser just putting his foot on it and clearing it out the danger area. Newell. Came off Benison. It's Avril who tries to place it. Well, by all rights, really, Everton shouldn't be here. <laughs> they should have fallen as Liverpool led four times a week ago. But they earned the right by sheer guts and determination to have a, a third match with Liverpool, and now they lead. Well, they watched in wonderment last Wednesday. They're thrilled now, the Everton supporters. They see Mike Newell, Harris, Glenn Hussein. Mulvey. Beardsley. Kendall, who I must say was pretty happy a week ago with the way his team had come back, despite Liverpool's long spells of supremacy, particularly early in the match. Well, Grovelara got into a position then where actually he was outside uh, the line of the ball. The ball was between him and the goal. Any fumble then, and it could have ended up in the back of his own net. Well, he's done orthodox for us a, a, a lot of times, and certainly he was then as well. Rush. Houghton. Here's Barnes. Oh, and Rush. As the ball bounced past Watson. And it is the sort of surface on which there will be mistakes. Atterveld. Well, last week it was Everton that had to answer all the questions. And now we find Liverpool have been posed a few questions. And now we wait and see, can they respond in the way Everton did last week? Benison. Staunton. Just uh, checking back through the records over the past couple of days, Liverpool hadn't been involved in a 4-4 draw since 1960 when Ronnie Moran played. Nickel. Here's Nickel to Beardsley. Houghton making a run across the face of the penalty area. It comes now for Staunton, who seemed to hit that pretty true with his right foot. Everill's header. Time for Beardsley to control and get Nickel round the outside. Andy Hinchcliffe glad to get in the way of that. Newell helping out defensively, but rather putting his side back in trouble, although McCall rescued them with the tackle on Rush. Well, Liverpool, I'm sure to the disgust of the attacking players in the side, 
couldn't hang on to the lead. Every time the likes of Beersley, Barnes and Rush put the ball past Southall, one went in at the other end. Yes, I think when you play away from home and you're a professional, Martin, and you score four times and you haven't won the game, then you would ask some questions about your defence. Well, can Everton do uh, any better? There's a long way to go yet. Mulvey. There's space here for Rush, which there shouldn't have been from the Everton point of view. Houghton on his left foot, and Southall couldn't afford to fumble that. With Liverpool will be so good at holding on to the ball, they really can keep Everton under pressure for some time. And with people like Ray Houghton prepared to make those runs in behind Everton's defence, it really can cause them problems. They really have to be on their metal for the whole 90 minutes, Everton. Staunton has done well. The sort of inspiration that uh, Liverpool are looking for. They are a side blessed with the great individual skill. And when they apply it to, to the team pattern, they uh, are irresistible. But Everton are resisting well. And they do know that if they can get at the centre of the Liverpool defending, more chances might come their way than the one they've already taken. He didn't make the same mistake there, Kevin Ratcliffe, as he made last week, did he, when he tried to just ease the ball past uh, Ian Rush. That time he's learned his lesson, it was straight out the ground. Beardsley. Southall's ball. McDonald. But rather ran for Graham Sharp there, Ebrill. It's not an easy pass on for him, as you saw. There was no one making tracks on the outside for Everton. Venice. The uh, shape of this Liverpool formation, very similar to the one that played at Luton on Saturday. With Houghton coming from the middle of midfield, and an offside here, given against Rush, one presumes. I think it had to be in Rush. There's certainly no way that Ray Houghton, with a wonderful late run, was offside. It must have just been in Rush coming back from an offside position that just got caught. Everton haven't won a Merseyside derby since March 1988 when Wayne Clark got the winner here to end Liverpool's 29-game unbeaten run in the first division. Beardsley waited that perfectly for Nickel. Really needed to have an eye for a pass to see that. Barnes. There's a double cover really on John Barnes involving McDonald and Atterveld. Barnes got better and better a week ago and in extra time really was the best player in that particular section of the match. Here's Beersley. Well, there was no offside if Hatton could have uh, rolled the pass a little more firmly through to where Barnes was waiting to collect it. You mentioned Neil McDonald, and that's exactly where they're using him tonight. I think Howard Kendall was very worried about the former John Barnes. And what he's done is he's pushed Neil McDonald wide on the right. It's a sort of double cover and a bit of protection for Raymond Atterveld against John Barnes. Here's Atterveld at right back, wearing seven. Newell and Sharp will work for every cross, every ball that comes up in the air. McCall. McDonald can whip the ball in. Oh, and that's Steve Nicholl with a back pass of some pace. 
plenty of Everton players would have been pleased to get in a header as good as that to test Grubler. I think if, I think if we were talking about a striker getting a header and you would have been complimented on, on such a good header as he didn't see it until very, very late. There's a wealth of Merseyside derby experience in both sides, but I don't think any of the players have been through anything quite like this. Watson, who's given Everton the lead. Here's Barnes. Has Liverpool looked to reply? Sharp showing well. Trying to buy Everton some time here. That's straightforward play from him. The call. They build through midfield. Hitchcliffe. Staunton can clear. Oh, and Houghton was wrong footed. <laughs> Liverpool uh, striving to do what comes naturally to them. by ferocious Everton attempts to get the ball back. Right, this one from McDonald. And it's his throw. There's a patience about the Liverpool game that really is quite admirable, Martin. I think most teams would be throwing the ball forward just now, desperately to get back in, especially a derby match. But not Liverpool. They've gone through it so many times. They're sticking to the way they enjoy playing, pushing it about, and they know more than most that there's plenty of time left. Moran, whose name runs through the history of Liverpool Football Club for the last 40 years now. Houghton. Credentials under examination in the FA Cup tonight and of course in the first division on Sunday when they're at home to Arsenal. It's a very telling time. But only a fool would write them off, whatever the results tonight and in four days' time. Staunton. Barnes. And glad to have John Edwell in midfield and McCall. Oh, and Atterveld was never going to get that much time in a match of this importance. Rush going in at the near post as uh, Staunton tried to pick him out. Listen, what rescued Everton there was Steve Staunton's poor first touch on the ball. Had he got a better first touch on it, I'm sure he would have got a cross in. Hussain. Everell and Hussein. Here's Hinchcliffe. Over ambitious then. Beardsley and Rush and Houghton looking for a combination that perhaps might have come off if Peter Beardsley had continued his run. Maybe he was worried about going offside. I think what Everton have got to be very careful that they don't do is that they don't drop back and decide that they're going to defend this one goal lead. They've got to put Liverpool under pressure as far up the park as they can. Because I feel that if they sit back and let Everton dominate the midfield, that it's too long in the game, it's far too early to do that, and Liverpool would probably punish him for it. Atterveld. And uh, the time 
Gary Ablett. Here's Rush. Has made something for himself, or perhaps for Barnes. Nicole. Thinking for a moment that he was going to get a corner. But the ball must have crossed the line. The first 29 minutes here has really zipped by. It's given Everton a one-goal lead. Mulvey. The sort of things that were coming off for Liverpool in the first half of the first replay. It's a difficult ball for Peter Beardsley to try and deal with on the volley and steer a pass to Barnes. Everton have really set out their stall as Howard Kendall would have wanted. Well, given that uh, Liverpool also lost the lead against Luton on Saturday, it might just suit them psychologically to have to chase a game for once. Bearsley. Barnes. Well, Barnes possibly could have uh, controlled the ball a little quicker and the opportunity would have been more promising then if he'd reined it in with the first touch. They still have the corner. Beardsley well, looking up and seeing Barnes by the near post and he's got to it, Hussein. That's Rush. And then uh, Mike Newell, who hasn't shirked any of the... Uh, Defensive responsibilities when Everton have needed him. The most wholehearted character. Staunton. Beardsley staying on the left, having taken the corner. Well, no amount of rain here can dampen this atmosphere. But there is plenty of it falling. Sharp, offside. And uh, a decision, a good one from our vantage point. taste of their own medicine may not be the wisest policy Barnes wide on the left this time well, the Everton fans not very happy about the decision uh, obstruction by Atterbell it must be ominous for Everton and I'm sure Howard Kendall will be worried about the amount of pressure that his team are under they seem to be getting pushed further and further back Taken by Mulby. Solidly away by Keown. Everton haven't pushed out in any great numbers, but there's a mistake by Abbott. Come on, Andrew. <laughs> Newell getting in the way, really. It's unfortunate for him, and he still chases back. And Mike Newell typifying the Everton approach here. 
Although he was almost too eager. And Hinchcliffe uh, in trying to slip the ball inside. Hit Newell who turned his back and Liverpool were very nearly quickly in on Neville Southall's goal. And this is a Liverpool throw. Mulby. There was a little stab at the ball by Watson, but it ran Everton's way. Not only did uh, Dave Watson start his career with Liverpool, that he had a younger brother, Alex, who was a Liverpool player until uh, earlier this year when he signed for Bournemouth. So as I said at the outset, very mixed feelings in the Watson family about what's happened here. I'm sure they're all delighted that Dave has been a scorer. Just over ten minutes to go to half-time. Hinchless cross. Well, Neil McDonald has uh, a very good touch in his right foot, and he's never frightened to shoot. It's a long time ago, the nil-nil draw in the... Uh, first game in this fifth round tie but you might remember that McDonald had two or three meaningful strikes at goal in that match at Anfield he's probably one of the better Everton first time strikers of a ball from that range McCall leading the charge for Everton came off the heels of Hussein and the way things have been going for Liverpool at the back they'll be pleased that that didn't lead to, to an Everton opportunity Oh, and Houghton left his foot in there. In Liverpool's anxiety to impose themselves. But it has been a wonderful feature of this tie all the way through, Martin. That there's been some hard tackles like this, and he comes in, but the players that have been tackled have just jumped up and wanted to get on with the game. Watson, Keown and Sharp on the far side as we look. The uh, ball played by Ratcliffe to Newell. Hoisted back in by Hinchcliffe. Grobler got to it. He's on his way back now. Hussein, Ebrel, Keown and... Oh. It's not easy being a Liverpool defender, or one would think a Liverpool supporter in moments like that. It really is a consequence of the goals that they have conceded. The air of uncertainty is very identifiable. Yes, and there every time, Mark, like, we, do, we do go on about it, and I hope the people at home aren't getting fed up with us, but you can see they are not dealing with anything that comes in the box with any great conviction. They're either Bruce is coming in, he's punching it, but not cleaning it far enough, or Glenn Hussein and Gary Ablett, even when they get their head to it. The ball is only dropping five or ten yards outside the box. They really have to go to get some power into their headers just to relieve the pressure for a little bit. At the moment, they're not able to do that. So that's why a team like Everton are saying, hey, if this is causing them problems, never mind knocking it about and looking pretty. Let's be effective. Ronnie Moran, born in Liverpool, played almost 400 first-team games for the club. And similarly, Howard Kendall has his heart in Everton. It's all part of the recipe here. In many ways, the duel is a domestic one, but the context is so much wider. And wherever you're watching, I'm sure... You're thrilled by uh, this second replay in which Everton lead Liverpool by a goal to nil. Rammed in after 12 minutes by Dave Watson. Don't you believe it's a domestic affair, Martin? I was in the Scottish office last night and all day yesterday the phones were ringing from people in pubs all over Scotland hoping that the game was going to be shown again. So there's thousands of them north of the border glued to this. 
and they'll uh, maybe be praising Steve Nichol. One Scott out there for uh, the challenge there, although it was uh, an illegal one. Martin Keown to take the Everton free kick. Newell. Whatever number Barry Benison has been wearing, and as I said at the outset, there have been a lot of different ones. He's usually given the right back job. Sharp. McDonald's well played. First time to Hinchcliffe. McDonald. Oh, and uh, well, Mulvey used his skill and his strength then to hold off Ebrill. Barnes, who uh, is so difficult to track down when he comes in from the touchline. Where Staunton is operating at the moment. Beardsley calling for it, then dummying it. Rush. More stirring work from Newell, but unsuccessful for Everton that time. Rush. And that's a belt, and all around us here, the Evertonians uh, were relieved that that finally got back to Southall. From I, think Ray I think Ray Atterbelt was the only one in the whole, certainly the crowd that supported Everett that thought he was the coolest man in the park. I think even Neville Southall almost filled for a minute. Five minutes to go to half time. The winners go to West Ham in the quarter finals. Nicol, Mulvey, now Barnes, there's been uh, plenty of promise about the way Liverpool have passed the ball but they haven't been able to uh, open Everton up, Howard Kendall very conscious of the need to improve the defensive side of his team's performance, uh, that may seem obvious after a 4-4 draw, but he's worked on that, and that's Possibly in the end cost Pat Nevin his place in the starting lineup. I think it also cost Tony Cotty his place, Martin. I think that uh, Mike Newell's willingness to work back and help his defence also gave him the nod over Tony Cotty. Halton. Barnes. Nicely worked by Liverpool, Houghton's cross, Nickel gets his head to it, not quite, no. But a boot there from Benison and then Nickel on the volley. There's a chance really made by uh, the sort of physical pressure that Everton have been applying, and Liverpool did it well here. Yes, and it's a bit unfortunate because Steve Nickel actually has more time, you see there, he has more time than I think he thought, and had time to probably take two touches on it. But it's always easy from up here, isn't it? I was just going to say, how on earth was he to know that? <laughs> <laughs> he could have asked us. <laughs> Nicol renowned in these parts for the size of his feet, size 12s, and for his gargantuan appetite. Very popular in the Liverpool dressing room. Except when the sandwiches come around and uh, he eats a lot of them. <laughs> Watson takes the free kick. Romola has dropped it. Liverpool escaped. <laughs> A little nervous smile. I think he must be the only one connected with Liverpool is smiling. More encouragement for Everton to launch more of the same. Newell. Oh, that was well played by McCall. It looked as though Mulvey would be able to intercept it, but McCall made it his. And that's what I mean by Everton putting pressure on them up the park, Martin, and not allowing Mulvey and people to get the ball down and put them under pressure. 
Everton are far better when they put them under pressure in, in Liverpool's half. Watts has made a run across the face of the area already. So at least Sharp and Keown's coming on the far side. Here is Martin Keown. Oh. Very good defending in there by uh, Benison. The ball was headed down behind him. Benison was able to twist his body round to stop it reaching Sharp. Although Liverpool have enjoyed probably the greater of the possession of the ball, Martin, what will have pleased Everton is, apart from Ian Rush early on, they've not really tested Neville Southall, and they've kept him about 18 yards from goal, and that will have pleased Everton. Rush. Well, all the while, uh, Everton were having to get their tackles in on the retreat, but they managed to do that. Liverpool were trying to stream forward and get in behind them. Well, these are the lucky ones, the ones that got tickets. When it could have been a sellout here twice over. to equalise before half-time. It drops for Beardsley. Well, the Evertonians were howling for handball. Liverpool wanted a corner, and that's what they've got. It's a question now of whether Joe Worrell has added on enough time for Liverpool to make full use of this. And Watson protecting the lead, but he's given Everton. Well, Roddy Moran has to uh, go in to raise the spirits of his team. They're a goal behind, and how appropriate, I suppose, in a Merseyside derby, that it's a scouser whose goal separates the two sides. Dave Watson, after 12 minutes, and as much as it can be in a game of this passion, it's going to plan for Howard Kendall and Everton. They lead Liverpool by one goal to nil at half-time, but you do sense there's a great deal more to come. After 90 minutes of sheer hell, you're gonna get thirsty. <sighs> this is new isotonic leukocyte sport. It gets to your thirst fast. Isotonic means it's in balance with your body fluids. When I was a boy, I read as a boy. As I grew older, my tastes changed. Now I am a man, I read as a man. I want wit, ideas, style, and good writing. That's Esquire. Esquire, a better title for a man. In looking at our business class, we could have had our seats like this. Very profitable for us, not so good for you. 
So on our 747 transatlantic flights, instead of making more room for seats, we've given our seats more room. Air Canada, it's a breath of fresh air. To show that the new Escort 60 van can carry more than any other van in its class, we arrange this simple demonstration. Not all have the Escort's generous height. Not all take the standard one meter pallet. Of course, that still leaves several vans in the running. But with 720 kilos of bricks, only one can actually drive away. The new Escort van. No other van in its class can carry so much. Trust Ford to carry it off. My brother and I are identical in every way. Except you can take me anywhere. And he's got him! Oh, he's got him with the second punch! March 19th on Sky Movies, Mike Tyson fights Donovan Razor Ruddock. As challengers go, this guy's a cut above the rest. We'll also see Julio Chavez defend his World Light Welterweight titles. Tyson versus Ruddock, exclusively live on March 19th, a Sky Movies special event. We strike while the iron's hot. Welcome back. If you're with us on Sky Movies, I do hope you're enjoying yourselves. 1-0 to Everton at half-time. Another important half-time to give you Rambolo's Cup semi-final. Second leg, Sheffield Wednesday 2, Nigel Pearson and Danny Wilson. Chelsea 0. That's 4-0 on aggregate now to Sheffield Wednesday. Looks like Big Ron is going back to Wembley. What do you make of this one, Frank? I think it's a good game. Um, I think uh, Andy touched on it, actually. I think Liverpool are playing some lovely football. But they're not penetrating as much as you've seen them sometimes in the past. And that can be difficult as well with Everton playing with a sweeper system. But I think that's what uh, Ronnie Moran, I was going to say Kenny Dalglish, will be saying at half-time. That's what Ronnie will be looking for, a little bit more penetration. All that finesse and the lovely football is OK up to a point, but you've got to finish up the crosses and shots. Let's and... have a look at the goal. Dave Watson, who started his career at Liverpool. Yeah. He'll have enjoyed this. Yeah, we see there's a couple of headers there again that led to the goal. Um, great save there by Bruce. Claiming for a handball just after that. Watson comes in, deflected off the same, I think it was, in between his legs. And finished up in the back Watson of the net. Watson got a head on it here, look. In that, the was, box first. that was sharp, sharp, and then there. Watson flick on. So they've won the first two headers. And it, most goals that I see against Liverpool this season, it's how I've been from dead ball situations, uh, throw ins, anything like that. They certainly have a problem when it comes to dealing with orthodox crosses. We saw Bruce Grubelar appealing for the handball. Yeah, but he, he didn't, didn't touch it. Nil. No, he didn't. No, it was a good try, though. No question about <laughs> that. Uh, the best opportunity that Liverpool had, without question, fell to Ian Rush with a score at nil-nil. Yeah. And we haven't seen too much else of Rush, either, have we? No, he's looked very quiet, actually, but playing against sweeper systems can be a little bit difficult. Um, great little turn here. We thought they might have taken it with his left foot and tried to bend it in the far corner there. But he decided to take it with his right, the outside of his right, and it wasn't enough bend on it. It was a little bit too near, especially for a goalkeeper like Neville Southall, who's a fantastic keeper, isn't he? Again, the point was made during commentary that Everton have managed to keep Rush 18, 20 yards from goal. It's important yeah. they continue to do that. There was one little spell during the first half that I felt as though Everton weren't believing themselves enough. You know, they, they were a goal up, and it was almost as though what's happening here? Maybe we should sit back a little bit. And that's when Liverpool started dominating the game. But the only thing was that Everton kept on bringing men back and even Yule was dropping back into midfield and they were packing the defence. And uh, that kind of move there that Rush done, which he's fantastic at, making angled runs up the side of the centre-halves, those are the kind of passes he's got to receive to get in behind the defences. One more piece of action to show you from the first half. Raymond Atterveld with, well, how would you describe it? More than a half chance. Good drive. Yeah. And Bruce Grubbelar did well with it too, didn't he? Yes, he did. Uh, there was an awkward one for Bruce that actually. It might have looked at first sight uh, as though it was a bad save, but it skidded just, uh, just before it hit the deck, and that's one of the times it's really difficult. It bobbled just as well, uh, just as that felt was going to hit that ball. And it skidded just before Bruce Grubbelar, but he managed to come away with it. But he's had some funny moments again, Bruce, hasn't he? There's no in-between, is there? He's no. either brilliant yeah. or awful. Yeah, that's right. And, and he makes some he magnificent was... saves and he's so committed as well. He comes out for some crosses and makes great saves, but there are other times 
The one that he came out for just before half time, it was bending towards the end of the 18 yard box and he should have just changed his mind and went back into goal, but he decided to come all the way in. A little bit fortunate no to get away done. with it. 1-0 Everton it is. We remind ourselves it was 1-0 at this stage last week too. And then it really burst into life. Live at Goodison after these. Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar. Ah, I wonder if I could interest you in our aluminium double blade. A lovely door. It's a pity about your windows. Now we're back. When it comes to double glazing, you will find that we're amazing, and you know we. Hello, is your dad? Don't be glazing at all. I'm really a teacher. I don't suppose you'd be interested oh, in. Oh, yes. Come in. Let's talk. Time for a sharp exit. Time for a cool, sharp harp. I've finished for the day. But would you be interested in a half-price executive booking? If your production process is falling apart, get an expert to help you get it right. The Enterprise Initiative. Phone 0800 500 200. It's awesome. 20 massive hits and one mega album. It's awesome with Seal and Soho. Vanilla Ice and the brilliant number one from the KLF. Jesus Jones, MC Hammer and The Farm. The hottest album around. It's totally awesome. Of course, the new Ferguson F801 has all the features you'll find on the best-known ultra-compact camcorders, but it also has one you won't. Arnold Schwarzenegger in Running Man. One more time. Or Emilio Estevez, Charlie Sheen and Keeper Sutherland in Young Guns. Battle of the Blockbusters. Register your vote now. You choose, you decide. 0898 500 172. Running Man or Young Guns. 0898 500 172. Tonight at 10. The Battle of the Blockbusters. Welcome back. We'll be back at Goodison very shortly, but uh, while we await the re-entrance of the players, Frank, as I said, 1-0 at half-time last week, and then, well, all hell let loose, didn't it? Yeah, fantastic. Can you see that happening again? Oh, anything can happen, really. Um, Liverpool have just got to step it up. The, Andy, our, our Martin was quite right, really. I mean, they were 1-0 down there. There was no sign of panic. And I find that when Nottingham Forest are normally playing and they're 1-0 down, they still continue to pass the ball about as though it's 0-0 or even if they're in front. So it's a lovely style they've got, isn't it? Mm. But it hasn't been just as effective this season. But in saying that, they're, they're second top of the league and they're still in the cup at the moment, you mm. know. What about Ronnie Moran, who's, well, I would have thought down the years, said just about everything he has to to a whole host of Liverpool sides, but what now to raise the lads? Well, I think they'll tell him just to keep going, but try and just get that penetrating ball, keep nice and calm at the edge of the box, because it's the final pass. The passes up to the edge of the box are fine. They're looking almost like their old self. But it's the final one at the edge of the box, just that slide roll pass, the right pace on it, the good runs by someone like Rush, who's been a little bit quiet tonight, really. And they're also having a little difficulty because Everton are pushing uh, the full back into Mark Barnes, mm. and Barnes finds this a problem, like most wingers would do. He doesn't get the time and space that he would do against a normal back four, mm. Richard. And uh, John Barnes has always had a man on him, and then somebody coming and double covering as well. Mm. So that's not giving them the same the width and bands causes all sorts of problems when he's playing well. Well, the teams find their way out onto the pitch. Let me just uh, remind you that this is the 16th live FA Cup match that you've seen here on the Sports Channel this season. There's been highlights too from all the other big games. We know that we've got huge audiences in pubs and clubs up and down the country, but if you want this service in your own home, ring Sky now on 0733 891111. 0733 Eight nine double one, double one. Let's go back to Goodison. Andy Gray and Martin Tyler.
Both sides out. Ronnie Moran has had his say. The caretaker manager who says that uh, he hates to lose even in the fiver sides at training. But it's a player that Liverpool let go to uh, Norwich City, first of all, who has given them the major problem here. On a pitch that's uh, getting heavier as the rain continues to pelt down. And uh, from being a passing pitch, which was slicked by rain, it's in danger of becoming a heavy one, which might suit those prepared to scrap. Joe Worrell, who's had a very busy week. We saw him at Southampton on Monday night, ready to get the second half underway. In terms of years and history, Everton, the senior club on Merseyside, they were founder members of the Football League, and they used to play at Anfield. But when they moved away because of politics, they started a rebel club. It was called Liverpool FC. And Everton <laughs> have uh, had to regret the day that that happened on uh, more occasions than they would wish. Well, the crowd getting something of a soaking as well, but they won't mind that because this match, even at 1 0 Everton, is poised on a knife edge. I think as Richard quite rightly reminds us, it was poised at 1-0 at a knife edge a week ago. Matavell getting the better of Staunton. Here's Newell. It's a useful turn. It's a useful cross. Just veered away at the last from Graham Sharp. It's a great cross in for your striker want to go with it. And I think Graham Sharp will just be a little disappointed he didn't get in front of Barry Venison. Well, if he'd done that, probably Mike Newell would have put it uh, high to the far post. <laughs> That's the gamble you take, clean yes. up front, Martin. Rush quickly on Keogh. It's a great chance for Liverpool. And uh, the player who's punished Everton so often for their defensive mistakes couldn't provide the equaliser then when he was one-on-one -on -one with Southall less than two minutes into the second half Everton very, very relieved Ian Rush hasn't let them uh, off the hook very often Money on that man scoring there, Martin. Here's Rush again. Lifting it to where Watson doesn't deal with it decisively. Barnes. Everton break out. Here's McDonald. Well, we were thinking at half-time that Liverpool uh, would be disappointed with their final ball to try and create chances, but this one was presented to them by an individual mistake. Yeah, he preys on defenders' mistakes, Ian Rush. But when he got in this position, Martin, it's a tight angle. He must have thought his eyes lit up, and I did fancy him to score, but Neville Southall defies him. And Martin Keown offered the goalkeeper a big vote of thanks. Beardsley did well, and uh, Joe Worrell might have played advantage then, uh, easy to say. And Liverpool took the free kick so quickly, <laughs> they could have uh, still caught Everton off their guard. Sharp. Hussain had a look to see where Grovela was. Sometimes you need to have an extra look to... Just uh, a little bit of uh, roughing up. The sort that Hussein accepted in good part. 
Grotteveld. Linking up well with McDonald. Between them, uh, Barnes and Ablett do the defending. Carlton. Nichols got ahead of him and has now had to check out to get the ball to feet. Out the go. And one or two options on uh, this side if, if Liverpool switch the play. But Everton didn't let them. McCall. Everything being done again at top pace. McDonald. And this is Ratcliffe raiding down the left. Touched by Steve Thornton, surely it's got to be a corner. Well, we thought the first half was quick, Martin, but if anything, the pace of the game certainly quickened. As if both managers realise that this is an absolutely crucial phase. It was the uh, stage a week ago when Liverpool really lost the initiative. Benison oh. first to it for Liverpool here. Five minutes into the second half. I'm just thinking back to the Ian Rush chance, Martin, and I wonder if that's a sign of the way the game's going. Because in the first half, Bruce Cropland makes an excellent save. The ball drops to an Everton player and they're one down. Neville Southall makes an excellent save from Ian Rush. The ball drops to Dave Watson again and he clears it. Staunton. The one uh, factor we must keep an eye on is whether Barnes can come strong in the later stages as he did in the first replay. Everton have certainly put out a tactical plan to try and prevent that. Beardsley running to the right. McDonald. It's like one of those games in training where you're allowed one touch. The touch by Ablett it was too strong. Just looking quickly at Everton's formation, Martin, it looks like Howard Kendall has made a change tactically. He's brought John Ebro back into the right, pos right back position that Ray Atterveld was operating in in the first half. Push Neil McDonald into the left side of midfield, and it now looks like Atabelt and Ebro are given the task of keeping John Barnes quiet. Well, Barnes has been faced by three different right backs in this tie. This is a measure of the respect that Everton have for his capacity. And as I said at the outset, Goodison Park has been a, a very good. Ground for Barnes. Ablett. April will get that. then that the odds were that the ball would run. But here is Newell. Down in the centre for Everton. They were taken a bit by surprise. And although Hinchcliffe made a valiant effort from uh, left back, it ends as a goal kick. really for every other team in the country Rush and it's Nickel 
who takes it on is Mikko and Garvey Southall. Twice in the second half. They've seen the whites at the goalposts and the whites at Neville Southall's eyes. But they haven't put the white of the ball into the back of the net. Great goalkeeping. It's a corner. That's Hussein. Here's Gary Ablett. Now the signs here of Everton feeling the pace. They've put in a, a huge amount of work already. And there's still 35 minutes to go. Nickel. Headed back by Hussein. And uh, Beardsley tried to angle it in. This is the chance of the match for Liverpool. It was a great diagonal run from Steve Nicol, but Southall makes himself look very, very big. And look at the anguish on Ray Houghton's face there. It drops for Newell. This is Hinchcliffe. Sharp wants an early cross. It came, but not towards him. Out of out. Calm it down with Ablett if uh, calming down is possible. That's uh, off Barnes, who thought he might have been nudged in the back by Ratcliffe. And in the end, it's Ratcliffe who's hurt. You mentioned that perhaps some of the Everton players may be feeling their pace, Martin. And that may well be true because as much of the advantage of possession that Liverpool had in the first half, you do have to work far harder when you're not in possession of the ball to get it back. And that was certainly the case in the first half. It's the type of pitch as well, it's becoming a pitch that saps your strength. A little bit glue on top. And certainly if there's any cause for anyone feeling physical effects, everything you would feel would feel that before Liverpool. Liverpool's response in the second half has been what you would expect. And they've had two very good openings, but there's still a goal behind. Staunton going beyond Barnes. Beardsley, knowing where Rush was. Well stopped by Watson. Barnes. And how did he do that? Nicol coming in. However many players you get around John Barnes. He's often got a trick to spare. There's a menace about Liverpool at the moment, which is really worrying Everton. Oh, and Southall didn't get that. As Barnes jumped at the near post. Well, these are ominous signs at the moment. But you watch this. It's wonderful footwork from John Barnes. Strike back, creates the opening, and it's aware enough to put in a great ball into a very dangerous area. But Everton have got to weather this storm. They've got to dig deep and keep them and Liverpool at bay. preparing to make a change to bring on Pat Nevin. Sharp. Great work again from Newell. Atavell's cross was deflected away. One for Beersley to chase. Southall realised that the best bet for Everton was for him to come and get it. can't make 
no substitution yet. The game restarted. Houghton. Steered away by Keown. And a bit of pushing there by Adler. Graham Sharp he knew exactly where to run then. I think he's actually a bit fortunate to get away with it, Martin, if we could see it again. Because he just gives Gary Ablett's chair a little tug, using all of the experience on the blind side of the referee. And Gary Ablett goes over. Just watch his left hand. There's a little tug of the shot. Gary Ablett goes over and Graham Sharp gets a free kick. I think that's what you call experience. Off goes uh, Raymond Atterbell. Encouraging the crowd to... Uh, continue their vociferous support even without him and Pat Nevin we didn't see the best of him a week ago because he was hurt very early in the game in a, a late tackle by David Burrows Everall takes the free kick Keown jumps for it and it's put over the top by Newell it was a sight of goal really it was, it's a difficult chance for Mike Newell. Again, I mean, they don't clear the lines well enough, Liverpool. And as it comes down, it's just a little bit high for him. And he just gets underneath it. Well, John Everill, who's turning the ball back there, has a huge responsibility for Everton in the 30 minutes that remains if the score stays the same because uh, he really now has got to take on Barnes head-to-head -head. Nevin with more attacking options to offer on the right-hand side than Atterveld here is Ebrel oh, and it's taken from Grobelau's grasp by Hussein that's good defending, though, Martin. The ball's there and you're a defender. You put your head on it and argue about it later. Owen oh, Watson. It was an excellent corner. Watch Bruce Strobel again, though. Gets himself in trouble again, Martin. He's not getting that. And he gets away with it. Andy Hinchcliffe, uh, it is time with Manchester City. Set up a number of goals with uh, superb corners taken from the right side with his left foot. And Everton uh, using uh, that skill to very nearly give them a luxury of a two-goal lead. What a luxury it would be. It hasn't happened in this Merseyside derby in the fifth round of the FA Cup. Yet. Fine ball by McDonald. To Hinchcliffe. Newell goes to the near post. Sharp coming in on the far side and Grovelaar filled the gap between them decisively. And what's Watson going to do now? And Keown. And Ratcliffe, the three centre-backs, will tell you that they had that all worked out. I'm not so sure. And it's scuffed back by Watson in the end. Well, I hope our new viewers on the uh, Sky Movie Channel are as captivated by this as our regulars on the Sports Channel. And it's by no means over. And in football, unlike in movies, you don't know what the outcome is going to be. There's no script. Barnes. Here's Nickel. Well, hey! It was a... Uh, a spectacular save by Southall, but maybe not the most difficult that he's had to make in the match. Well, at times, this man amazes me. It's one of the reasons why I feel he's the best goalkeeper in the country at the moment. What a man to have in your goal when you need him. Not quite for Hussein. Here's Venison. 
Nickel. Little dot now for Jan Molbit and Barnes. There's not much width for Liverpool, but certainly none on the left. A little on the right now, provided by Nickel. Four in the middle for the cross. And Nickel gets it in. Rush! Well, in a normal circumstances, I would be tempted to say this doesn't look like it's Liverpool's day because I would fancy in Rush to put that in the net from there. That's a very good chance from a, for a striker of his quality. It's a free header and he's really got to hit the target. It was a magnificent cross by Steve Nicholl who put in a lot of work on the ball to improve the angle for the delivery and now Newell is offside. Very hard as well, Martin, when Liverpool are in this kind of form and they've got the rhythm to their game that they have at the moment to overturn it. And you feel if you were Howard Kendall, all you can do now is hope that your team can see it out. And maybe, just maybe, snatch another. occasion here that attracts so many greats of uh, past Merseyside days. Ian St John in 1965 he won the cup for Liverpool at Wembley. Now uh, part of the local radio commentary team getting a night off from his television duties. And night giving, off! <laughs> giving his saying? usual impartial doing on it wouldn't he? <laughs> Just like I am over here. actually dropped off the back of Sharp's head. This is Venison. Everton retreat. The same carries the fight to them, and so too does Ray Houghton. Watson's got to get that for Everton. Well, you say that, there was still Neville Southall for Rush to beat. If it was to finish at level again here after extra time, we'll be back to Anfield next Wednesday. And you wouldn't bet against it. And I certainly wouldn't be foolish enough to predict that it would stay at 1-0. Crisp layoff that went a long way back to McDonald. Trying to pull a string or two again, Neil McDonald. Ebrell actually getting ahead of Nevin. Ebrell. And it's Liverpool for once having difficulty to, in getting the ball. And Nickel intercepted, but. And Nevin and Ebrill losing out, and then Barnes can't get away. The Liverpool supporters now will have more than a passing eye on their wristwatches. There is also here a, a magnificent scoreboard that keeps us abreast with the time. 
scoreboard, which reminds us that Everton are leading by one goal to nil. Staunton. Here's Barnes. Oh, well, there's a flag up for offside then, although the ball was uh, never that far forward. to the test really as to whether to uh, use a substitute With David Speedy very much uh, the favourite of the uh, two players on the bench to be introduced in preference to a defender Nicky Tanner yes I think he's going to make a change and he is doing and no surprise that it's young David Speedy or should I say not so young David Speedy goes off so uh, Nickel may well go to right back and David Speedy who struck twice in the league game recently at Anfield against Everton they asked to do uh, now what Tony Cotty came on to do for Everton a week ago to save the day for Liverpool with Beardsley on the left. That uh, just suited Watson's clearance. Houghton. Everton trying to find a second win here, but above all else, a second goal. Rushes offside. This is just continual pressure from Liverpool now. And the question of the whole game now is, can Everton hold out? I think that I would be very surprised if Everton could summon the, the energy to get another goal there. And I think it's just a matter now is, can they hold on to the end? Or will Liverpool finally breach and score past that man? too highly how much it would mean to Everton who made their worst start to the season to a season for 40 years Liverpool have plenty to lose in going out of the FA Cup but not everything oh, Speedy uh, hits it too long miss hits it in fact
cleared by Ebrell. It was an interesting uh, gesture by Peter Beardsley a moment or two ago. He was pointing to Hussein to send the ball wide to Barnes. If ever they needed a piece of John, John Barnes magic, then it's certainly now, isn't it? Very nearly put in a position to supply it. come up and he's uh, leading the appeals that it might be uh, a Liverpool ball Liverpool uh, honest enough to admit they have ridden their luck even to get this far in the FA Cup and uh, play here in front of 40,000 they stumble past Blackburn stumble past Brighton and luck does tend to even itself out too much of it tonight but Everton have had Neville Southall and a goal from Dave Watson and they are the two determining factors at the moment most definitely they've definitely had the better chances Liverpool but that man there has been in fine form I was ridiculing him before the game about when he was going to get a clean sheet and I think he's pretty determined to show me he was capable of getting one tonight certainly looks in fine form he's amazing that man Neville Southall they uh, other Everton players were away uh, resting in a hotel, but Neville uh, comes to the ground early, gets out on the pitch early, gets himself uh, in the right frame of mind, gets the body working. An absolute perfectionist. I just think he's not happy unless he's covered in mud before the game starts, Mark. to the Everton support at the moment it's understandable come on, come on. Ablett Nickel took it on the thigh Ruin Sharp didn't quite have the time that he thought pressed by Ablett Sharp to Nevin. Oh, and uh, Rabala pulls it out of the air. Amazing, isn't it? At times he makes it look so easy just then. This one came off the back of uh, Keown's head. Houghton. Mulder. Liverpool. Working to get the final ball right. And uh, to Everton, arms waving about uh, there in the uh, close proximity to the ball, but the referee saw nothing wrong. Barnes takes on two. And it was the third who uh, dispossessed him, McCall. Oh, and it's broken for McCall. Glenn Hussein won't reach it. McCall wonders what to do. And in the end, uh, he had to wait for reinforcements. saying just how tired Stuart McCall is he's worked tremendously hard in midfield and when the ball broke to him he just didn't have the energy to go forward on his own Liverpool drive forward again he 
sense again. But Everton are hanging on. Staunton. It's an offside. Russia scored at will against Everton in the past for other managers. Ronnie Moran might be thinking, why can't he do it for me? Maybe he will. There's ten minutes to go. Hinchcliffe takes the free kick. And, uh, as Mike Newell came in, it took another touch as well. It's going to be a corner. Groveler actually uh, was uh, off his line. I'm grateful that the, there was no dip after the deflection. Hinchcliffe. Newell across the goal. Oh. It was headed into uh, the percentage area. It might have gone in. Sharp might have put it in himself. It's a great cross and a totally unselfish header from Mike Newell. He knows he's not going to score. Just how close Graham Sharp is, we'll never know. That would have been the seal and that would have been the Liverpool's fate. They'll look back on that if Liverpool equalise now. Staunton's cross is an early one. Southall's backpedalling. Retrieved by Speedy. It wouldn't drop for Nicola. He's still got the shot in. Somehow he manufactured it on target. And that took a lot of doing. And Southall had been on his travels. Got back to base. Basically his first error of the night. Steve Nicholl is playing with such courage here. No one has done more to try and get Liverpool back into it. Houghton. Nicholl. Looks to try and take them on. He's tripped, he's got a free kick. It's already taken. And Watson climbed high. Mulby. It's all in the Everton half. Liverpool are six minutes away from going out of the FA Cup in the uh, most painful of manners for their supporters. Any other club in the country they'd rather lose to than Everton. But no one more than Liverpool have shown down the years that football is a 90-minute game. Which made it all the more ironic 
and it was in the 90th minute that Tony Cotty stopped the winning a week ago. Here comes Nicol again. Houghton. Peter Beersley hasn't been able to make the sort of impact that he did uh, last week. Now running around and Roy Evans uh, trying to pass on a message that can hardly be heard. from Nickel, Southall's catch. I think that kind of attack Everton will be pleased to see in the last five minutes. They have got defenders who are good in the air and are capable of winning the balls. And then a goalkeeper like Southall, they've got one who'll come and collect balls and take pressure off them. Here's Barnes, ran for him off Everett. Less than four minutes to go. Only sharp upfield for Everton. And they find him. Help from McDonald. Oh, and uh, Ratcliffe had the right idea, but not the right execution. Speedy. Lifted in by Mulvey. Now there's a wider front to Liverpool with Speedy looking infield again, though. No one wide on the left, even Barnes has come inside. It's intense Liverpool pressure. Kept the ball, well that's not enough. Sharp showing again, but uh, Adler read it. Everton just can't get out. Hussein. Staunton. Barnes is header. Now, Nevin can let Sharp battle for it again. But it's hardly brought a measure of relief. Beardsley. Staunton. Hussein couldn't angle it across goal. Hamilton have two minutes to survive. And still you wouldn't bet on them doing it. Nickel. Liverpool, for all their possession, can't get a shot in. Mulby. If it is to be a defeat for Ronnie Moran's team, it's uh, going to be a defeat with uh, a measure of honour. And Everton at last can uh, breathe again. Newell. Nevin well, was looking for a little more from the call then, but he's hardly got the legs, he's done so much. Well, we may not have had eight goals, Martin, but we have had everything else. It's been quite a pulsating tie. And it does look like that man's going to suffer a defeat in his Merseyside derby, and Everton are going to go through. Liverpool will probably feel they've deserved something with them this game, but cup ties are not about that. Cup ties are about winning. Nevin 
30 seconds plus stoppage time and Nevin to uh, Newell who's still running even after all that he's put in McCall well he's got it back to Southall Howard Kendall survived Two real scares early in the second half when first Ian Rush and then Steve Nicholl got through against Neville Southall. The goalkeeper was magnificent for Everton then as he has been throughout the tie. Keon and Ratcliffe getting in each other's way. The crowd thought they heard the whistle, they haven't. Joe Worrell is looking at his linesman. It's almost here, Martin. This cup epic very nearly has a conclusion. It has. David Watson has won it for Everton. But Neville Southall saved it for them in the second half. And Everton are into the quarter-finals of the FA Cup. Great credit to Howard Kendall's players. No disgrace for Liverpool. A bewildering series of events throughout this saga. A fifth-round tie which began for Liverpool under the management of Kenny Dalglish. It included a serious candidate for the greatest cup tie of all time. And it has ended at a time of concern for the Anfield club. But at a time of great joy here at Goodison Park for Everton their supporters nothing but delight for them they've kept their season alive in the very best possible way at the expense of the old enemy <laughs> and <laughs> if anything summed it up Stuart McCall's reaction there and Dave Watson is talking to Gabriel Clark Dave, great scenes in the tunnel here. Stuart, they're giving you a big hug. Tremendous win. You're a Merseyside, you know all about these games, but this really must top the lot recently. Yeah, we were desperate today. Uh, the fans, you know, they've had nothing to see about most of the season. And, uh, you know, our season really depends on today, and the lads have gone out and have a, had a right good goal, and, uh, you know, we've come with the right result. It seems an awful long time since the goal on 12 minutes, but a, a great moment for Everton and a great moment for you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's great for the club. Uh, I struck the ball, I think it took a few deflections and went in, but um, it doesn't matter as long as it went in and uh, we won the game. It looked like a bit of a scramble yeah. at the time, what do you remember about it? Not much really, just the, the ball bounced loose and um, I struck it and, you know, lucky for us it went in. After that, of course, to say the least, you had to hang on. Yeah, I mean, they put a lot of pressure on us and um, I thought we defend as well, you know, come towards the end and, um, you know, it, it proves the point we kept a clean sheet. And what about the keeper, Big Neville, there? 